Hello students, this is Shruti Agnik from LJ Institute of Engineering. Welcome to the introductory lecture of software engineering. Now, before we move into the regular syllabus of this subject, I would like to give you a brief introduction about what is software engineering. Software is nothing but a set of instructions that you are feeding to the computer. And based on these instructions, it is going to give you some output. Software engineering is nothing but an engineering approach to developing softwares. So what you are doing in software engineering is you are relating it, he shall relate it to a building construction pedagogy. If I tell you to build a wall, it would be rather easy for you to build a wall based on your previous intuitions regarding the building of walls. You will bring certain bricks, you will bring uh, water, you will bring uh, cement and you will construct a wall. It would be an easy task. Now if I tell you to build a multi-story building, say 40 to 50 floors, then your intuition for a simple wall building will not work in this case. So you need something more. You need something extra. You need to go towards an engineering approach. Same applies for developing softwares. If you are writing a small line, a small uh, scoped program like converting degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit or adding two numbers, it won't be a tedious task. But this intuition will not work if you are going to deliver a working product to your client. So building a software with an engineering approach is software engineering as such. We shall now move on to see what is happening in our documents. Let us see what is a software. Software is nothing but a computer program that when executed provides desired features and functions and performance. So you are feeding something to your computer, it is processing it and it is giving you the output. It also has a data structure which will help you to easily manipulate your data. So you are having a database which is storing your information. You can have registers and all, which is a hardware part which is going to store your data and help you to calculate and third part is descriptive information in both hard and soft copy by this we mean you all must have heard about something called as a manual manual is a thing which comes along with a software be it a desktop application be it a uh, be it a software uh, that you are buying let us take an example of Windows operating system. Along with an operating system, you have a help for it. If you are buying Office 10, you will always get a documentation online. If you are buying any desktop application or an antivirus, they come along with a handy manual. So descriptive information, data structure and feeding in your data is a combination of what a software is going to do. Now. What is software crisis? Software crisis is something where your software can fail to meet the required requirements. It can also be that you are not able to develop or deliver your software in time. Okay. Then sometimes there may be cases when the client is getting your software and he says that this is not what they want. Actually, they wanted something else. So late delivery. Then there are chances of uh, debugging errors when you are not able to enhance it, you are not able to alter your source code. So due to these reasons, you can have a software crisis. Now, uh, if you are having software crisis, we can use all the things in form of a hardware. Hardware is a substitute. Whatever things a software can do, your hardware can do the same for you. So you can see that hardware is a better approach as compared to softwares. The first reason is laptops that you buy, they generally come in 45,000 or 50,000. Then uh, you can see software is quite expensive as compared to hardware. 
if you go and buy a rational dose for national suit 3 lakh rupees if you are buying any licensed software it will cost 6 lakh rupees so you are using something which is actually more expensive you can see people are using more of software instead of hardware the reason behind this is the characteristics of software in spite of software being very expensive we are moving towards software so now we'll move on to the characteristics of software so characteristics is first is software is developed or engineered so software can be developed or engineered because you can uh, hardwares have have always man, been manufactured and softwares are never manufactured they are always engineered so software is an engineering approach whereas hardware is a manufacturing kind of approach you can say that the approach of development for hardware and software are totally different the second thing is a uh, software doesn't wear out by wear out we mean that if you are using a hardware it will exhibit a relatively high failure rate early in life as you can see in this curve this is where your so, uh, hardware has started to work and relatively it is having high errors at the start as your hardware functions properly the rate will decrease and at some time it will become stable but as time passes the failure curve rises drastically the reason is all the environmental uh, maladies like dust vibration temperature etc so your hardware is going to wear out due to environmental maladies next is software curve software curve is never going to uh, deteriorate in this fashion it will de deteriorate with time of course but the way it deteriorates is different first we can see that when you are developing a software your uh, software is susceptible to not susceptible to environmental maladies so first in your software life cycle it will undergo certain changes this is the change and due to the changes there may be errors spiking up so as and when you are solving the errors the failure rate will decrease when it decreases to a certain extent there is a requirement for a change needed in your software so you are implementing the change you are again delivering your product and again there are failure rates high then again they start deteriorating with time and again when you are able to go down with your uh, rate of uh, failures again there is a change to be incorporated so before an error is solved another change is requested every time and therefore your software will slowly deteriorate due to such changes next is hardwares are always replaced but in softwares you don't have such spare parts you are just supposed to focus on correcting your errors and there must be some uh, error in your design or in the process next is softwares are uh, more custom built than component based softwares don't consist of components they consist of uh, custom built things like uh, you can have reusable components in your software let us take an example of dotnet dotnet is going to give you an inbuilt gui component in your inbuilt gui component you are having your drag and drop uh, buttons and you are just using them directly in your software to create a gui okay second is netbeans netbeans when you are creating a new application you directly get your class name and your, uh, the main method is already implemented you just have to code inside so some things are reusable and they are directly available so due to these things a software is much preferred than a hardware and you can afford to pay for these expenses because they are going to reduce your overall cost as compared to the hardware next we shall move on to application domains application domains we will see system softwares system softwares are the applications 
which are uh, they provide a platform for other programs to execute so you can take an example of your system software as windows 10 which is your operating system you can also take editors compilers as your system software next is application based softwares this is application based they are generally real time projects like your banking application or your transactions okay next is your engineering or scientific software you can take an example of autocad or matlab you even have a a, a wireframe format to design in your autocad okay you can design an aeroplane you can design things for uh, buildings architectural designs so all that you can do in scientific or engineering softwares next is an embedded software embedded software is a software in which you have a hardware working you have a gui which is helping you to uh, make the hardware work so you can take an example of a microwave oven next are product software lines product line softwares they can be your word processing they can be your tally they are always application specific okay next is your web application your web applications are uh, facebook's linkedin twitter all these things are your web applications next is artificial intelligence softwares these are generally used for uh, your uh, you have an example of alexa they are intelligent softwares and they help you to uh, understand they work like humans for you uh, whatever orders you give them they will follow you also know about siri the intelligent driver then uh, we have legacy softwares legacy softwares were softwares which were developed decades ago they have uh, you have an example of fortran cobol so uh, previously in the past years all the softwares were built in cobol and fortran and they were very important softwares currently if you want to use those softwares with this new technology you require some conversion some modifications to meet the current requirements so legacy softwares were softwares which were developed decades ago and they have been continually modified and they are modified in order to meet the changing requirements and it has been a headache for large organizations because they need to bring about a change and this change is giving is costing them and there's a lot of risk involved in this okay so uh, legacy softwares are were generally of very poor quality previously and now we need to improve the quality of legacy softwares and the last definition that we'll see for today is software engineering software engineering is nothing but establishment and use of sound engineering principles in in order to obtain economically software that is reliable and works efficiently on real machines so you can say that you are using some good practices which are economical and they work efficiently on any real time machine so those practices are generally systematic disciplined and measurable approach we are actually developing an application which is which is ekdam uh, which is totally methodological which is disciplined which is quantifiable which is uh, operational which which could be maintained and it is always evolving by past experience the past experience they are gathering from tools and techniques methodologies and guidelines so here is what we are doing in today's lecture we have seen what is a software what are the characteristics of the software what are the various applications or domains where these softwares with their own characteristics are used we can also see what is the software engineering approach and how you are going to see 
the software engineering in the coming chapters next time we will continue with the layered technology which is a part of the software engineering thank you